Topics which we'll cover in this lesson are electric current, electric current in conductors, Ohm's law, resistance and resistivity, and combination of resistors. So let us see what exactly we will gain after going through this entire lesson. You would have observed such phenomenon around you. For example, when you switch on, uh, when you switch on the switch, your bulb glows, right? When it is switched off, it again dims. Or it would have happened with you that you accidentally touched the open electric socket at your home and then you get an electric shock, right? So what do you think all these are caused? So these are all nothing but what we say in our layman terms that electric current, right? So current is something which we are going to study in this lesson. So you can take many more examples where uh, these things play a role. For example, your battery, which you use in your, in many of your electronic devices, as well as you would have seen inverters in your home, right? So those batteries are also an application of uh, this current flow or charge flow. The computer, your desktops, the electric fans, your uh, television, mobile, everything which you see around yourself, all electronic and electrical items which we see around you are nothing but applications of what we are going to study now. So this lesson, in the previous two lessons, we studied about charges. What is an electric charge? What are the different properties of charge? So we studied about static charges, that is the char when the charges, the scenarios where the charges were at rest. Now we will look at the scenarios or the phenomenon which take place when charges move. So what happens when charges move? It gives rise to electric current. Current is a word which we normally use in our day to day life, right? So in this lesson, we will study electric current in detail. We will see different properties of electric current, what gives rise to electric current and many other things. So at the end of the lesson, we will also solve some problems based on the same. So let us start the lesson with what is electric current. As I just told, electric current comes into picture when I talk about charges in motion. You already know what are electric charges, right? So when we, as long as we imagine that my charge is at rest, it is not going anywhere. So we talk about electrostatics, that is the charges, the branch which deals with the study of charges at rest. The moment I talk about charges moving, when the charges start moving, we no more talk about statics, we talk about dynamics. Now the flow of charges constitute electric current. So electric current is nothing but when charges flow, electric current is set up. Very simple, right? So how do we basically measure electric current? <coughs> how do I know how much electric current is flowing through a particular wire? I mean, I know that all of you are aware of what a current is or in what context we use current. We often say, right, um, say, for example, let us suppose your mobile phone charger you have plugged in to the switchboard. You say that now when your mobile is getting charged, you see that current is flowing through this wire, right? So that means there has to be something, there has to be some parameter which will measure current. I mean, how will I measure current? So current is basically measured as the rate of flow of charge. So what do I mean by rate of flow of charge? That means how much charge is flowing with respect to time. So let us suppose if I say how much amount of charge, if I say let us say 10 coulombs of charge had flown in one second. So we say what is my current? My current is nothing but 10 coulomb per second. So that is my current. So electric current is basically measured as the flow of charge per unit time. Right? So we can write this as, let us suppose if I denote electric current with I. So electric current is nothing but time rate of change of electric charge. So we can write it as dQ by dt. 
right? It is generally denoted by capital I. The SI unit of current is amperes, which is denoted by capital A. Like the way we have SI unit for charge as coulomb, similarly we have the SI unit of electric current as ampere. So how do we define ampere and from where does this word ampere come? We will study about that in the next slide. So let us take this simple example. This is a simple circuit which is drawn here. Normally just to since we are just at the first slide of the chapter, let, let me tell you a few very small things. Whenever you see an electric circuit which is drawn for you, this represents nothing but the source of voltage. This is basically the source of the current. This will give rise to current. So this is nothing but your battery. This battery is represented in your electric circuit with two lines, a, la a smaller line and a longer line. So the longer line generally denotes the positive terminal and the shorter line generally denotes the negative terminal. So this is your battery which is the source of your current. Right? What is this? This kind of symbol generally denotes a key. Key or which you can say as a switch. If the key is in this position that means the switch is right now off. That means there is no current flowing through the circuit. For example, this bulb is attached in this circuit. When will the bulb glow? When you switch it on. When you switch on the circuit, then the current will flow. Right? Right now the switch is open. So there is no current flow in the circuit. Now as soon as the key is pressed, as you just saw, the key is pressed. So your circuit becomes a closed circuit. So the current flows through the circuit and the bulb close right this is what basically i mean this is what happens in a basic circuit you switch on the key i just told you how we represent a key how we represent a, a battery source so that you don't have issues when you go ahead but because as we go ahead we will draw more complicated circuits right so till now what did i study i basically studied that Electric current is nothing but moving charges constituted. Whenever charges move, electric current is produced. It is denoted by a capital I. The SI unit is ampere. We measured it as time rate of change of charge flowing, right? That is rate of flow of charge. Now, what about the direction of current? Now, let me clarify a very important thing right away however i am talking about the direction of current but that doesn't mean that current has a specific direction this direction of current basically talks about from where will the current origin originate and where will it terminate right so normally what happens is if you look at this circuit what will happen normally this is the negative electrode right of the cell so this negative electrode will give rise to many electrons. So your electrons, when I talk about electric charge, electric charge is nothing but your electrons. So the electrons will flow in this direction. This is how the electron will flow. So this is the direction of electronic current. So electronic current is basically the current which is in the direction of flow of electrons. Now, if the electrons are moving in this direction, where will the positive charges move? The positive charges will move in this direction. Right? So, that current is known as conventional current. So, the current constituted by the electrons is known as electronic current. And the current constituted by the positive charges that is opposite to the electronic current is the conventional current. Now when I say current, what do I mean? Is it electronic current or conventional current? Because at one time you can assume it to be either electronic current or conventional current, right? Let us suppose if I say that okay, what we will do, we will always consider that current will start from negative and it will 
end in positive or we will assume that current will always start from positive and it will end in negative but in no case you can assume both things right so basically what convention we followed is the direction of current is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons that means the direction of current is opposite to electronic current that is why this other current is known as conventional current because according to convention this direction of current is considered as the direction of current so in any circuit current is always assumed to flow from positive towards negative right so conventional current or in, in general electric current always the direction of electric current is always opposite to the flow of electrons now please don't ask why is it so because there is no precise answer to this this was what was devised by the physicists at that time they decided that okay let us follow this convention and since that time this convention has has been followed so it is nothing but a matter of convention that we consider that the direction of current is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons clear so you are clear with the electronic current and conventional current part okay let us go ahead and define ampere just now i told that si unit of current is ampere so one ampere is defined as the current when a number of electrons having one coulomb of charge pass a given point in one second so it was very simple to define this because in the previous slide what did i tell i tell that current is defined as the rate of charge flow that means dq by dt right that is charge per unit time now we know that what is the unit of charge it is coulomb and what is the unit of time it is second now when i want to define one ampere so one ampere will be nothing but one coulomb per second that means one ampere would be the amount of current when one coulomb of charge pass a given point in one second right so it is very simple to define one ampere is the amount of current when one coulomb of charge passes a point in one second now what is one coulomb of charge you remember i am just trying to explain why i wrote here when a number of electrons so what is this number of electrons remember the definition of charge charge was nothing but according to quantization it was nothing but n into e that is the number of electrons into the charge on each electron so how did we define one coulomb we said that one coulomb the charge charge will be one coulomb when the number of electrons is 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 into what is electronic charge it is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb now if you multiply these two what do you get you get this as 1 coulomb so that means 1 coulomb is the amount of charge which is carried by 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 electrons so that means when i define one ampere it means that let us suppose for example let us suppose i have this particular point this is a point a so what happens if these many electrons let us suppose this 1 2 3 4 like this there are so many electrons so if 6 into 10 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 electrons passes this point a in one second then we say that the current at point a is 1 ampere so are you getting my point so 1 ampere is nothing but 1 coulomb of charge in one second and 1 coulomb of charge represents nothing but 6 into 10 to the power 18 electrons right okay so now let us try to understand what initiates the charge flow as i told you before also so as we already know that charges already always exist right so what is that force or what is that internal push that makes the or that causes a charge to flow i mean why do charges flow from where does it start flowing 
So here we have to investigate what is it that initiates the charge flow. So basically if you look at it with the help of this example, let us suppose you have a slope like this. Okay, let us suppose this place which you are seeing here, it is some object, you can also consider, imagine it like uh, the slope which you have in the children amusement parks, right? Have you seen? What happens? The children climbs the stairs, they go to the top and then they slide and enjoy the ride, right? So what happens is, they, what they need to do? They need to just do the work to climb the stairs and reach at the top. Now, once they sit on that slope, after that they automatically come down because of that slope. So, they do not have to do any extra work at that time. So, similarly, once the charge start flowing, then it keeps flowing. Okay. But what is it that initiates the charge flow? So, that is what we need to investigate. So, basically, see, this is what it happens. So, that means there is a let us suppose here a man is standing here whose job is to pick such balls and place the ball at this point. So he will keep placing balls at this point and after that the balls will keep moving down. So that means basically what is this man doing? The purpose of this man is to initiate the flow of the balls. So when it initiates then it will keep flowing towards the slope. Right? So similarly, once the charge starts flowing, then it will keep flowing. But what is it that will initiate the charge flow? So that initiation factor is nothing but EMF. So again, here is a new term for you. EMF is nothing but electromotive force of the cell. So that is why we say that this cell is the source of current. Why do we call it source? Because from here only, because of this cell itself, the current flow gets initiated. The current flow starts. So EMF, that is electromotive force of the cell, drives the current carriers to move in a specific direction. So this EMF causes the positive charges and the negative charges to flow in specific direction. And because of that flow, current is observed. So what happens? EMF basically provides an arrangement which can supply energy or which can do work to move a charge from one point to another. For example, you have several charges inside this battery. So in order to take that charge from one point to another, a work needs to be done. So this EMF provides an arrangement which does this work. So basically EMF is nothing but the potential difference between these two electrodes, between the positive and the negative electrodes of the cell when no current is drawn from the circuit. That means when the cell is just kept as it is. Then the potential difference between its positive and negative terminal is known as the EMF. Now because of this difference in potential between the two electrodes, what will happen? Charge flow will take place because charge will tend to flow from higher potential to lower potential, right? But there is no conductive path between the electrodes. I mean the charge cannot flow from inside the electrodes. That is why a path is created by the circuit. So when you draw a circuit, this wire basically is nothing but a conducting wire. If you use an insulating wire, then there will be no current flow, right? Because it will not conduct electricity. So this conducting wire basically acts as a path for the charges to flow from higher potential to lower potential. Therefore, the electron starts moving towards the positive terminal. So how will the electron move towards the positive terminal? See, this is my negative terminal. So this will give rise to electron. So this electron wants to go towards the positive terminal because opposites attract. So how will it go? It can either go, go like this directly or it has to go like this. Now it cannot go directly because there is no conductive path. So the only option it has is it has to go like this. So the electron will go along this path and it will reach the positive electrode. So similarly all the electrons will start flowing likewise and this flow of electrons gave rise to electric current. Similarly the positive charges from the positive electrode will try to come towards the negative electrode and therefore again the positive charges will flow through the circuit opposite to the direction of electrons. Right? 
So now you understood why the electrons and uh, the positive charges flow in this way because due to the difference in potential. So basically the main reason what is the root cause for this flow of charges? The root cause is the difference in potential between the electrodes of the cell. So this difference in potential between the electrodes of the cell is known as EMF that is electromotive force. Did you observe any a surprising thing here? Electromotive force however the name says that it is a force but actually it is not a force. It is a misnomer. What is misnomer? Misnomer means something which is the name suggests something but it is actually something else that is a misnomer. So here if you look at the name it is electromotive force so you will think that is it is some kind of force but basically it is not force it is basically potential difference that is it is the difference in potential between the two electrodes so potential and force are two different physical quantities. So we say that electromotive force is a misnomer but why is it called electromotive force because it basically acts as the initial force to initiate the flow of charge that is why it is known as the electromotive force. So now we understood what is the factor that initiates the charge flow. Diamond PU Science College, Balki.